Oh yeah, Belta. Welcome to my OSP faction overview. This is just a quick video to take you through all the ships that the OSP has, look at a few of their weapon modules and maybe a couple of other things, so that when this update goes live, you've got a basic idea of what the ships can do, and you're not completely overwhelmed like I was when I got access to it. So the OSP as a faction really focus on the idea of a rebellion or resistance pressing civilian ships into military service. So a lot of their ships have interesting quirks to them, but in general, they cannot go toe to toe with a military vessel, which is what the Shelter Alliance have for all of their ships. So what you need to do with the OSP vessels is find out what their niches are, find out ways that they can overcome their superiorly armored and armed opponents, and do that either by overwhelming them with, overwhelming them with numbers, clever tactics, unique weapons, things that are not maybe 100% military doctrine, but are, are clever ways of dealing with the situation. So the first ship we're going to have a look here is the Shuttle Class Clipper. There are two ships in the OSP roster that are classed as clippers. These I would class as somewhere between a corvette and a frigate. The shuttle I would put as less than a corvette, to be honest, but the tugboat itself is somewhere in between the two. We'll look at the shuttle first. Um, the shuttle, the, the Clipper Class Shuttle is, sorry, the Shuttle Class Clipper is a cute little vessel. It's very, very small, half the mass of a Sprinter, which is the Alliance vessel. It costs half the points of that vessel as well. The basic hull for this is 50 points. The basic hull for a sprinter is 100. In terms of armor, it has the same armor as the Corvette, and it has a slightly higher crew complement of 55 compared to 40, which is mostly, I think, because it has so few compartments, it's actually quite hard to get a berthing on here and other things. So that just gives you the chance to, to, to play with this vessel a little bit more than you would be able to if you're restricted on crew size. Some other interesting stats about this ship. It comes with a BEW 800 drive, giving it a top speed of 35 meters per second and a flank speed of 52.5 meters per second. That is exactly the same as the FM 2200 drive that the Sprinter comes with. So out of the box, these two ships are exactly the same speed. But something that's very interesting about this faction is they have access to some lots of civilian modules. So unlike the Alliance, which has access to really advanced military-built specification equipment, the OSP have repurposed civilian equipment. So we have the BW800 drive, the BW800 reinforced drive, the Chi 77 yard drive, which is a maneuverability drive, gives you linear thrust and turn rate, and angular thrust. But we also have the Sun Drive Racing Pro Drive, which is an aftermarket racing drive. Uh, essentially, we are repurposing kids or young people's um, racing shuttles and pressing them into military service, which I love the flavor of. Thank you so much for putting this in the game. Uh, this thing gives you plus 25% top speed and flank damage probability minus 20%. This flank damage probability minus 20% is actually really important because the Sprinter Corvette gets this by default as a hull modifier, but the Sprinter does not. So the shuttle does not. So adding the Sun Drive Racing Pro Drive gives it that same ability as the Corvette to flank for a long time without needing to worry about damaging the engines as much. The other interesting thing is this top speed modifier is actually faster than the whiplash drive available to the Alliance. So if we equip this on the ship, we now have a top speed of 43.75 meters per second and a flank speed of 65.63 meters per second. This is faster than the 63 meters per second that the Corvette can go to. So suddenly we have a ship that can outspeed the Sprinter Corvette. So what can we do with this? Why is this something we want to do that with? Why do we want to make this ship so fast? Also, at this point, the ship only costs 110 points. To put a whiplash on a sprinter costs you 150 points, so it's cheaper too. Well, if we have a look at the mounts on the ship, it only has three mounts available to it for external hard points. But the most interesting ones, I think, in this situation are the ML9 launcher, mine launcher, and the RL18 rocket launcher. There are some other things in there. I'm not going to go into detail on any of the E-War or sensors. Um, the main thing to bear in mind is almost all of these are either civilian models that are trying to compete with military models or their old military models that have been impressed into service. Um, but the MLL-9 mine launcher is exactly what it says on the tin. You take it to a zone, you deploy your mines, and the mines will loiter there until they detect an enemy. There are actually, let me just uh, name this so to get the warning to go away, I will put a magazine on the ship. There are actually three types of mines available. You cannot design new ones in the missile designer at the current time. That may change. But there's the S3 mine, the S3 net mine, and the S3 sprint mine. The S3 mine and the S3 net mine are the same points and pretty much the same missile. The only difference between them is that the net mine is networked with other missiles in its minefield. So essentially, both of these mines are orientated in a way that they will sit inactive around a point that they've been deployed to until they detect an incoming ship. When they detect the magnetic signature of an incoming ship, they will orient towards the ship and activate a radar seeker. Once they detect the ship, they will engage their drives and move to hit the ship. 
The difference between the S3 mine and the S3 net mine is that the S3 net mines will talk to each other and they will all home in on the same ship, even if it's outside the detection radius, um, hopefully overwhelming its PD before they hit it. So th there's just a small difference here. If you want all of them to attack one ship or you don't, it, you know, you've got your choices there. The sprint mine is the only difference between the sprint mine is it has a much faster cruise speed. So it has a 700 meters per second cruise speed. These have a 250 meters per second cruise speed. Um, so it's a much faster mine, but it costs 10 points. So you can already see there's a potential use case here for the sprinter, sorry, for the shuttle, where it could zoom around the map, get to some points, back cap them, and then deploy minefields on those points to prevent the enemy from recapturing them. Or at the start of the game, you could mine your own points that you still have nearby to prevent back captures later on. These missiles are quite powerful. Um, I don't know if you'd cut the damage that they do, but they're doing um, 200 centimeters of armor penetration with 5,000 um, hit points of component damage, which is a lot. They're not super fast. If the enemy's got PD, that they'll they'll be dealt with. But if it's being hit late in the game or the ship's already overwhelmed, they could sneak through and do a lot of damage. One downside: this ship is tiny, so a bulk magazine here only has 135 meters worth of. Um, storage capability and the CIC can only go in this 4x1x6 by by slot. You can't move it so you're forced to just use these two slots for bug magazine and if you check here if I try and put some um, size 1 mine, size 3 S3 mines in here I can only fit four which is a shame because the launcher itself can hold five missiles, uh, five mines but you can one um, magazine only gives you a, a load out of four sadly but it's still a very interesting option. The other thing that's unique to this faction that you could put on your, your shuttle is the uh, RL-18 launcher. This is an 18 barrel dumb fire missile launcher. There's no tracking on these missiles. There's no locking on these missiles. You just point and shoot. It's very cheap. This thing costs uh, five points to equip. And the missiles that you load into it, again, you can't customize these. They are two points each. Um, so if I put 18 on here, that's it fully loaded. These fire very fast, well, reasonably fast. They're very direct. They don't do a ton of damage. Let me just bring up the uh, um, this here so you can see them. So they've got a cruise speed of 350 meters per second, a range of 7,000 meters. They penetrate 70 centimeters of armor, and they do 850 hit points of damage. In testing, these are pretty good against anything up to maybe a Vauxhall. Um, after that, they really struggle to penetrate, but I've been able to strafe bigger ships with um, rocket-loaded uh, clippers and a... a Done okay. It's interesting. The the options are there for you to do some interesting things with these ships. They're very cheap. They're very fast, and they seem like a really nice um, harasser or back capper. Now, speaking of harassers and back cappers, that's the Clipper shuttle. Just the basic overview of it. There is another Clipper class ship in the roster for the OSP, and that is the tugboat. The tugboat is designed to move large cargo and other ships around shipyards. It has very powerful engines for its size. In terms of points, it costs 75 points, which is less than a range, which is what I'm going to compare it to, which is at 125 points. It's a smaller ship. It has way less armor. This thing only has five centimeters of armor, like the, sh the shuttle, um, whereas the range has 15 centimeters of armor. Um, uh, it also has a recycle modifier, minus 20%. This is actually a really big modifier because this affects the reload time of autoloaders. Um, which is a big part of this faction we're going to talk about here. Um, just to give you a comparison, the um, frigate has a flank damage probability of minus 15% and a missile programming channel plus one modifier on the uh, frigate for the Alliance. So that's the difference there. If we have a look at the tugboat here. First of all, I think it's super cute. I love that it still has its clamps. I wish I could use them in combat, but sadly you can't. Um, its module loadout is fairly straightforward. The most interesting thing being it has a casement or spinal mount on the front of the ship, which we'll look at in a second. Um, something I really want to draw your attention to on this very cheap ship that looks big and slow is that out of the box, it's got a top speed of 30 meters per second and a flank speed of 45 meters per second. And this ship can also equip the SunDrive Racing Pro aftermarket racing drive. And if we install that, we now have a top speed of 37.5 meters per second and a flank speed of 56.25 meters per second. This makes this ship surprisingly fast. This thing would also do quite well with the yard drive on it, which will allow it to maneuver in and around asteroids, um, using them as cover to jump out, fire, and come back in. And there's a reason you'd want to do that, because the main armament on this ship is this forward-facing um, casement slot. If I click on this, I'll, you can see what can be put on here. 
And um, we can put a missile launcher on here, but only size one. The PDT options, we're not going to talk about those just now. But there's two options here for projectile weapons, the C-30 cannon and the C-53 cannon. These are both unique weapons for the OSP faction. The C-30 cannon is a quad barrels 100 millimeter cannon with very high rate of fire. Um, the recycle time on its shots is one second, and it has 16 rounds in its autoloader. So this will fire 16 rounds in 16 seconds, um, which is a very high damage per second attack. Then it will reload for 30 seconds before it fires again. But this ship has the built-in recycle time. Um, I don't think we'll be able to see that here. Yeah, it's going to take 0 0.8 seconds between shots because of the built-in recycle time. So it's a very, very fast-firing cannon. Obviously, 100 millimeter guns have never been that amazing in Nebulous. But if you consider this as the fact that this is a cheaper ship than a Reigns, uh, it could actually be a frigate killer with a gun like this. A frigate and a corvette killer, and it's fast. The other option for this slot is the C-53 cannon, which is a 250mm cannon mounted on a ship this size with a uh, um, ammo capacity of 15 in its autoloader and a recycle time of 2. If we equip that, you'll see that it's firing a 250mm round every 1.6 seconds for 15 rounds. It's just over maybe about 20 seconds to fire the full barrage. Then it needs to reload for 70 seconds. So that's where me talking about giving it this uh, drive here to hide behind asteroids could be very powerful. It fires off a barrage from its 250mm cannon, then it gets into cover and waits out the combat. I have been messing around with a ship equipped with this and um, an RL-18 to fight frigates, and it has won almost all of the engagements I've had. Um, I've just given it 2PD and rocket launcher, a, a radar on the bottom, and this gun, and it's managed to kill every range I've put up against it. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm particularly good at the game and playing against the AI, a real player, that probably won't happen, but it's really interesting to see that. Um, it's a pretty scary little ship. Um, other stuff going on with it, obviously, it, it's fast, it's, it's pretty maneuverable, and again, it's very, very cheap. It also has the module slots to do some interesting things with. Um, so that's a really cool little ship. Just because people are going to want to see them, actually, very quickly we'll go over the PD that they've got available to them. The P11 PDT is a Defender PDT with two barrels. Um, in combat, I've seen it do very well at knocking down so up to four missiles. Um, it retasks very quickly, and it really does fill the airspace with lead. Um, it's actually quite nice for destroying incoming missiles. The F-20 Flak PDT is a rotary cannon, rotary flak cannon. Um, I think you're going to see very good PDT across the board for this faction because they're going to be dealing with a lot of incoming missiles. It's pretty nice. I think it definitely needs to be part of a layered PD system. And then finally, you've got the P-60 Laser PDT, which is very expensive at 35 points and requires 750 kilowatts of power. Um, it doesn't have that great a range. Up to one kilometer, it keeps its accuracy. But uh, the total range is 1,500. It is basically a welding laser that's been repurposed into um, anti-missile support. I wouldn't rely on these uh, for all of your PDT, but on an expensive ship, they might be quite useful. So continuing going through the roster, the next ship we're going to have a look at is the Cargo Feeder. The Cargo Feeder is another very interesting beast. Because it's designed to carry a lot of cargo, it's actually a lot faster than you assume it would be. Um, the cargo feeder is an awkward shape. It's very bulky for what it is, but we do have a reasonable amount of mounting slots. Um, it's basically a bigger version of the tug. First things first, it costs us, let me just bring that back up again. It costs us 175 points. If we compare this with the Voxel, which this is definitely comparable to, the Voxel, sorry, not the Voxel, our destroyer, it costs 200 points. So it's just a little bit cheaper. Um, it has more armor than the destroyer. Uh, that ship has 22 centimeters. This is 40 centimeters of armor. Um, it has a, just a slightly lower crew complement. The crew is more vulnerable. Um, it's not as easy to um, identify either. It's the same identity, actually, and it has much more structural integrity. It's not made for long-term combat. Uh, but that armor means it can take a couple of hits before things get bad. In terms of speed, we have a top speed here of 20 meters per second, flag speed of 30 meters per second, and we can still put on this the SunDrive Racing Pro Drive if we want to, as well as the Yard Drive. With the SunDrive Racing Pro Drive, we only get 25 meters per second as a top speed, um, 37.5 meters per second flag speed. I don't think there's a hull mod on this ship. No, no hull mod on this ship at all. Bearing in mind that the destroyer has an overheat damage chance beam of minus 75% chance, a power plant efficiency of plus 25%, and additional missile programming channel. The destroyer is very good. What this ship does have going for it is an even bigger casement mount on the front. So just the way that this ship had its front facing, sorry, the tug had its front facing casement here, the um, monitor also has one, but a larger sized one. And on here, there's some new options we've got available to us we haven't seen before. First of all, we have an option for the C81 plasma cannon. 
Plasma is a new weapon that the OSP have access to, and essentially its job is to crush and destroy armor on a ship. It doesn't penetrate uh, particularly well, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but what it does do is it degrades armor at a very high rate, meaning follow-up shots, even from lower calibers, should penetrate and do a lot of damage. It's a support weapon. Um, it, as it says in the description, it opens up attack from lighter caliber weapons such as 100mm guns. Um, we also have access here to the C60 cannon, which is a 450mm casement weapon with an autoloader of 4 um, and a recycle time of 4. So it'll fire one shot every 4 seconds and then reload for 60 seconds. Probably as a single weapon, I'm not sure if I like that. In multiples, these could be of a devastating broadside. We also have access to the T20 cannon, um, which is just a 100 millimeter gun, um, which has a recycle time of uh, one second for four rounds. Not that amazing. There's also the T45 mass driver, which is the um, OSP's answer to the railgun. Unlike the railgun, this does not penetrate. It still fires a extremely fast firing round, but they are rounds designed to crack asteroids rather than penetrate into ships. So this will do quite a lot of surface armor damage, but it won't actually ping into the ship very much. Um, so that's kind of your, your downside on that. If we just have a look at the penetration on the rounds, um, the factory blocks here have an armor pen of 120 centimeters. They do 400 component damage, but they leave the velocity at 2,000 meters per second and have a range of 21,000 meters. So it's, it's, it's a different type of gun to the rail gun that the Alliance have. Um, cycle time on this thing is uh, five seconds. It only holds one round in the autoloader and takes 25 seconds between shots. So that will slow things down a little bit. Um, this ship also has some large mounts on the top and the bottom of it, in which you can put some other new stuff. So you can put um, turreted plasma cannons in here. Um, there is also the container stack launcher. We're going to go into that in another ship because the container stack launcher isn't the fun version. Access to um, size 3 torpedoes on the ship and the RL-36 launcher, which is the big brother to the RL-18. This thing could hold 36 dumbfire missiles. Again, these are one-shot ambush weapons, but if you get them at the right angle, they could do a lot of damage. Um, there's also access to the T-30 cannon, which is a quad 100mm cannon, which could be very interesting if backed up with plasma. That's really it for the... Um, the cargo feeder. There is the, the stack launcher, which I guess I should show you, um, but there's a more interesting version of it. So the stack launcher, for those who don't know, is literally just containers. There's a few different types, and you can design new containers in the missile um, designer. So that's the one type of new missile available in the game. And for those not in the know, this is literally just a shipping container with an engine strap to it that we can add a warhead to and seekers to. Same as you design a normal missile. Um, the stack container, sadly, can only hold two missiles. Um, it's the small version of this, but you could put two of these on this ship and they do do a lot of damage. They're slow, they're easy to shoot down, but again, if you get that ambush, they can do some scary stuff. They can just wipe a friggin' off the face of the planet. There's so much, they're, they're, they do that much damage. So you can put two of these on the uh, cargo feeder. Next up, we have the Ocello Command Cruiser. Now, the Ocello Command Cruiser has been um, replaced by uh, newer ships in the Alliance. It's an older ship that's been kind of taken out of um, service, but the OSP have managed to get their hands on it. It is the only dedicated warship that the OSP have access to. I expect you're going to see a lot of these as the main anchor on the fleet. You can already see how many module slots that it has. Um, tons of compartment slots and main module slots here as well. Because it's a military ship, it gets additional military programming channels too. Um, the points cost for this ship is quite high. It is coming in at 575 points. By far the most expensive ship on the roster, except for the container liner, which we'll come to later. Um, what the Acela has going for it is really the sheer amount of module slots that it has. It also uniquely has access to a lot of Alliance military equipment that none of the other ships on the OSP roster have. So you can see suddenly we've got lighthouses, spotlights, floodlights available to us that we didn't have before. There's even pinard electric support modules. Um, a lot of these weapons are not available to anything else on the OSP faction. So you can see there's a good mix of Alliance and OSP equipment available to us here, which really does mean that the design for this ship is really up to you. There's a lot of customization available on this ship. It's probably one of the most diverse ships in the entire game. Uh, in terms of options of what you have for it. Engine-wise, I believe it uses... Um, does it use... It has a mix of both um, alliance, uh, alliance drives and also um, 
So if building drives, you could actually upgrade it to have an aftermarket performance racing engine if you wanted to, which makes me giggle. I love the idea of that. So the build possibilities on the Acelo are pretty insane. And I don't even want to think about going into them yet because there's just so many things you could do. You could put rail guns on it. You could put normal Mark 64 cannons on it. You could put container launch stack launches on it if you wanted to. It just has a lot going on for it. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by this ship and, and the opportunities it affords us. What we're going to do instead is we're going to jump onto our next ship, which is the Bulk Freighter, which to me is the most interesting ship on the faction. I think for a lot of people that's going to be the container liner. But for me, it's the Bulk Freighter, and I'll explain why when we load it up. So the Bulk Freighter is a random uh, layout ship. So every time you add one to your fleet, it'll get randomly generated on the layout. So if I'll add another Bulk Freighter, you can see that this one looks totally different to the other one. I love the crate on this one. Um, the hard points stay in the same locations, but the ship layout changes to show that they are pressing just civilian built ships into service, um, which I love. I, it's another amazing feature. I am never ever going to like scum my ships. I'll take what I get every time. What's fascinating about this ship is it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six by 10 by six mounts, um, which is four on each side. And these are all casement weapon mounts, meaning this is a broadsider ship. Rather than going face on, this ship wants to broadside you and probably roll over to hit you with another broadside while the first broadside is reloading. And what can we put into these broadside slots? Well, quite a lot. There is the CAT-1 plasma cannon as a casement weapon, or the T-81 plasma cannon as a turreted weapon. We've got stacks, etc. blah, blah, blah. We're not too interested in those. Um, but what we do have access to is everything along here. So we've already seen the C-30 cannon. We've already seen the C-53. We've already seen the C-60. There's also the C-65 here. The C-65 is a double-barreled 450 millimeter cannon. It will has an autoloader capacity of eight and has a recycle time of four seconds. So this is a um, an eight shot 450 millimeter cannon that you can mount broadside has a 90 second reload time. So you could put four of these down the side of the ship, fire off what, eight, 16, 32, 450 millimeter rounds very, very quickly, roll the ship over, fire another 32 rounds off and then get it into cover. I think that's pretty cool. I like the opportunities that this can afford us. You could also just rack it up with mass drivers, have it sitting far out of the battlefield, fire off a round of mass drivers, roll over, fire off another round, and then reposition while they're reloading. The possibilities for the ship are quite high. It is slow, but not so slow that it couldn't do anything interesting. Um, there's a lot of opportunities here. I've even tried, because these are all 3 by 4 by 3s it actually gives you a lot of flexibility. There's quite a lot of weapons you can put in these mounts, not just PD. And I actually, for the fun of it, put... Um, I can't, don't seem to be able to put them in that slot anymore. Maybe they made a change. I thought I was able to put uh, the the bigger cannon in them, but I have launched... No, what I did was I've put... Um, where is it? I put T-30 cannons in all of the side slots, and I put... Um, T20 cannons on the smaller slots. I just made it the 100 millimeter doom ship, uh, which was a lot of fun to shoot with, but didn't really do a lot of damage. Uh, again, it's another ship with tons of options for you. You could really go crazy with the design on your ship. Um, I, for one, am really looking forward to big, terrifying broadsides from these things. And uh, that's how I'm going to be building them, at least to start with, until I get my head around how the game works. So that is the um, bulk freighter class line ship. It is cool as. I really like the design on this. Last ship of the fleet that the OSP have access to is the container liner. Now, bear in mind, this thing costs a thousand points, okay? It is a huge ship, plus three missile programming channels on it. This thing is gigantic. Again, it has randomly distributed module slots on it. I've seen these on the top and the bottom as well as the sides. Um, the main reason you want to take this ship is it has 20 by 5 by 30 slots. And in these, there's a new equipment piece you can put in there, the container bank launcher. This is a... 24, it's a insane number of containers you can put on this. I'll just show you what it looks like fully loaded. So There's 24, another 24, and another 24. Oops, I clicked in the wrong place. And those are all container missiles, which if you get this ship, if you hold the ship back until later in the game, you can imagine how many missiles this thing can fire out. It is just the monster of long range missile death. Um, obviously they're container missiles, so they're easy to shoot down, but I have tried this against um, Axfords 
and it has completely overwhelmed their PD with the amount of missiles it can fire at them. Um, this is going to be a really scary ship, especially if it ambushes you from a direction you're not expecting, or your ship, your fleet are already engaged at dealing with, you know, maybe rockets coming at them from your corvettes, and then suddenly this comes out of nowhere and starts adding in container missiles to that. And bear in mind that you can, like I said before, you can customize your container missiles, so you can do some pretty crazy things with them. You could add... Um, cluster decoy launches to them if you wanted to or hardened skin to get them in a bit closer there's a lot you could do that they they will be interesting um and of course you can alter the package as well um max range on these is thirty one thousand meters by the way for those interested so this is that's the container launcher there are some other modules just to very quickly make you aware of them that are unique to this faction um we do have rapid cycle cradles which give faster recycle time which is the speed that your autoloaders fire at um, which means you can really push the the, the the burst fire of your auto-loaded weapons really, really high. Um, there is also, I think that's the main one that's new for this um, faction. They have their own radars as well, the Bulwark Huntress, the Scryer Missile ID system isn't new. Um, I think a Bridge Master, there's a Strobe Correlator and a Track Correlator. Um, they also have a Laser Dazzler to try and blind incoming missiles, which is, I want to play around with as well. But that's really just a quick overview of the faction. You've got the Shuttle Class Clipper which is fast and has potential. You've got the tug, which I think is gonna be um, a dark horse. I actually think this could be a really scary little ship, especially in a wolf pack. Um, I think it's got more bite than a, a Reigns has in terms of direct fire. By the way, I'm a direct fire player. I'm not much of a missile player, which is why they maybe appeal to me more than they might appeal to you. We've got the, um, the cargo feeder, which I also think is a little bit of a, a dark horse. It could be very, very interesting. Um, then you've got, of course, the Acelo class command cruiser, which will be good because it's an, a, an actual military vessel and will probably be the core of a lot of fleets. We've got the bulk freighter class line ship, which I think looks great. And I love the random um, layout of these ships. Um, and then we've also got at the end here, the container class liner ship. The only problem with these ships, of course, is how expensive they are at a thousand points base. They will be hard to fit into a fleet where you want to do lots of other things. Um, yeah, but that's the whole faction. That's what I wanted to go through in this video. Hopefully this will help you out a lot when the update comes out, at least knowing what the ships can do. Um, I'm going to try and get some games played, maybe record some videos. I'm going to go live with this as well when it comes out for everybody. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope that you are enjoying Nebulous Fleet Command. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. But ciao for now.